Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The mayor has called the meeting to order. Mayor Davey? I'm here. Councilmember Kaplan? <laughs> Councilmember Kaplan? <coughs> I, I see him. Councilmember Laredo? I, I think you see me, but I'm here. Yes, I do. I see Councilmember Laredo. Vice Mayor London? I see Vice Mayor London. Councilmember McCormick? Here. Councilmember Moss? Here. Councilmember Segarola? Here. Mr. Mayor, we do have a quorum. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States United of America, America and to the Republic, to the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. First item on the agenda, Mr. Mayor, is public <clears throat> comment. All right, Pete, if you could read off the, uh, the explanations and the warnings. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you watching on Channel 77 on Comcast, for channel, on Channel 99, on AT&T or streaming us live via our website. If you wish, wish to speak on the ordinance this evening, please dial the following phone number, 305-365-7569. Now it's time for public comments. Peter, any public comments? <coughs> Ed, I got it. I'm still here. I haven't died yet. I think- Hey, Ed, you're burned, you're burned. I have a little burned. public comments, not just on the ordinance? Yeah, I was about to say, Pete, yeah, they, let's be clear to people. They can speak to anything they want. They've got three minutes. Um, they can also speak about the pre special presentation we've got from the consultants. Um, so there are, there's the one ordinance, but they can speak to anything they want to. Uh, but yes, the, we will have a separate public hearing for the ordinance. Correct. Yeah. Well, they can positive. speak to anything. No worries. Any comments, Peter? Well, for those of you watching on television now or streaming us, if you wish to speak, please dial the following phone number, 305-365-7569. Then please enter the meeting ID of 231-627-8415. Now, for those of you that are currently in the meeting and wish to speak, please raise your hands by pressing, by dialing either star nine on your telephones, or if you're using the Zoom app, please raise your hand. We currently have no one signed up to speak. Okay, uh, having, uh, having no public comments, we'll move on to the Ed? next. It. Ed? Yes. I'm still here. Oh, okay. You, uh, what you, are you, you guys here? haven't fired me Good. yet. Goodbye. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Don't mind sitting here for. Uh, yeah, just to be clear, I want everybody to understand, I, I, I've gotten some comments and some calls <laughs> today. You know, this is about special presentations by our, by our um, consultants as much as <laughs> Don't want to use that word. We did use consultants in this process. We are using consultants in this process, but this is about their process. And this is how they came um, to the conclusions that they came to or, or how they provided the information they gave us. Um, so I, I just want everybody to be clear that there's nothing coming out of this other than their presentation. Um, so let, let, let's just be clear for people because I, I got a bunch, I got a few calls today um, suggesting that this was, this is the, the penalty, this is the ultimate meeting we're going to have. Um, I, I, this, there is nothing on the process about, uh, about our next steps. Um, my recommendation is that we should establish one meet and greet date, and then we should get together on April 13th and have our final meeting and make our decision on that day. Um, that's my opinion. I'm one, one council member, but I just want to put that forward. Um, if there are any brief comments, I certainly will entertain them at this point. Uh, yeah, council I, and then Council Member Laredo. Now, Council Member Laredo can go first, and I'll go after him. Okay. Council oh, Member okay. Laredo, you recognized? No, I, I've been consistent on this. I we, we've been 
it's probably a, already a six months since the resignation. <clears throat> uh, it's three full months since we've had all of the resumes and all the due diligence that we did on our own. Uh, I, I find it necessary that we move this forward. How that is would be how you all, we can share opinions. But I think uh, today we should move this ball very much forward, perhaps uh, either making a final vote or at least eliminating uh, uh, preferences. We, we were down to five, actually four, because I think I always been hearing a lot of comments, a lot, a lot of comments about our, our ability, inability to make a decision. And I think it's affecting uh, uh, the morale of our staff. And we are endangering also losing some people uh, who may be uh, in this limbo uh, as, a, as professionals that we may lose some very valuable staff. So I, I think we should make, try to make an effort to move this forward today as much as we can. And certainly no longer than the 6th. I mean, the 13th, that, uh, that seems to me an awful long time. Uh, that's uh, my, my, my reflection. Uh, we have a, a lot of time we've had to analyze the stuff that they're, they're presenting today so the public knows for their purposes. But we have had this report for a while. We have read it. We have uh, studied it. There's not much else to decide, uh, analyze. We just need to decide. And so philosophically, I'd like to move this a little bit further down the road uh, and today. And, yes, and, then, and then vice mayor and then... Councilmember Segarola. I think Brent was before me, Mike. Well, that's fine. Oh, that's very sick. Yeah, Councilmember Moss and then the vice mayor. Yeah, so, you know, I've done a lot of, put a lot of time in this, like I think everybody has. Uh, I've talked to uh, Connie Hoffman a lot, reading the reports, going through um, all the information. I think we need to set a date, uh, whether you want it to be on April 13th or earlier. Uh, I don't mind that. I think making a decision tonight is a bit difficult because, I don't think we notice this as a decision making uh, is more of a presentation, but if you wanted to make a meeting in two days, I'm fine with that if we wanted to. Uh, but I do think that we should get this done uh, sooner than later. Uh, one thing that, you know, from my analysis and looking at everything that we have on the table, and I want to make sure we have all the options on the table. Um, and, you know, I have had difficulty with uh, going through all this information. Um, but one thing that I wanted to see tonight, and again, if we don't want to make a decision tonight, that's fine, but I want to put it out there um, to see if there's any consensus that we might have it. But I think that Chief Press, I think we should consider him as one of our finalists. And just to take the time that we could sit, talk to him as if he was one of the candidates to see what you know, if we do like him, because he has been doing a good job, he's been up there, and um, and I, I think it's good that we we can at least consider him. Um, so I wanted to put that out there to see if either there was consensus to do it tonight. If not, um, I've already put it on the agenda as a motion for our Tuesday meeting. Uh, if we need to take action on it, Vice Mayor, you're recognized, and then Councilmember Segarola is next. Thank you. I happen to agree with uh, Luis Laredo that we've been dragging our butt and it's time to make a decision. Uh, we've heard as much as we're gonna heard. We've examined 52 resumes at least once, talked to, I can't tell you how many different candidates, met with candidates personally. So what I suggest is, we, we know what the presentations are this evening. We read all the reports. Uh, and I suggest at the end of this meeting, before the end of the meeting, we take a vote to see if we wanna make a decision tonight. If not, pick another day. But if after all the presentations, we can make decisions. Let's move forward. Let's get this done. Let's not keep dragging your butt. Thank you. As for me, as for me, I sort of agree with your timeline, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do think the most that I'm willing to do tonight is to reduce the candidates down to two. I do think we should have an opportunity to do an in-person meet and greet. And I think that that should be afforded to the people. Um, I've been uh, moaning since day one that this process has been slow and inefficient. I don't see the need to, to rush it now at the very end when, when we're uh, so close to the finish line. I'd rather do it the right way. Um, yes, we have been at this, what, six months now when it should have been done in three. But hey, that's neither here nor there. Uh, 
with regard to considering Chief Press, I'm very grateful to all the work that he's done as the interim manager. But one of the conditions that we set at the very beginning was that whoever was going to be the uh, interim manager during this process was not going to be considered for the manager's position. I think that would be a, a bait and switch if we were to change the rules now so late in the game. Um, I, and in all frankness, I, that is something that I'm not willing to, to consider. So I, I, I'm ready to hear the presentations tonight. I think we could be in a position to whittle down the candidates to two. And then over, literally over the, in two weeks, we could have a, a manager. If we waited six months, two weeks to do it right is nothing. Um, did Councilmember McCormick or Councilmember Kaplan, do you, one of you want to speak? I can his hand up. Point. I can go after him. I didn't see a hand, but who, yes or no? You guys are small on my screen. Frank, I can't hear you. Your sound? Frank, you got to plug in your uh, no. headset. Better? Better. better. That is better, but now it's now too loud? Better? I can hear it now. Sound check. Oh, perfect. That's good. All right. Sound was check. Quick move on your part. I think the um, this week, or this, maybe it was last week, begun uh, sort of an ambiguity and sort of troublesome development that um, shuffled my deck a little bit in terms of um, the, the result of a withdrawal of one candidate. Uh, that changes things somewhat. Um, I think it's suboptimal for me. <clears throat> it, um, it's always been an interesting question as we've debated this many times now, um, whether city management experience is, is, is predominant, um, displacing other considerations or subordinating other considerations as being relevant benchmarks for predictors of success or whether it's just highly relevant, but not dispositive. Um, I think it's become clear enough to me to suggest that um, success in a um, comparable city government is a reliable predictor of success to come. Um, there is obviously a basis to make uh, decisions on the basis of potential. There are meaningful predictors uh, that all of these remaining candidates who are very fine people with great track records and much accomplishment all possess. But the, the change in the roster um, has me sympathetic to the idea of inviting Chief Press if, if he's amenable. <laughs> the, um, when did you guys get this together? Ignacio's point... Uh, this must be Mike's doing. Ignacio's point is... Uh, Maybe Correct. That, that, that was the stipulation. There's precedent for removing that stipulation. We've done so in the past when another uh, interim manager from within was doing a good job and, and looking at the um, landscape that we were faced with at that time, we asked him if he was interested and we removed <laughs> the stipulation. It's very simple. Uh, we uh, decided, I believe, at the last meeting or the meeting prior that we would not take uh, a de final decision tonight. It is not good order to change that decision tonight. If, if there's an appetite for reducing the number of remaining candidates, I, I think we could do that. I'm ready to do that. Uh, I just disagree that we're dragging feet, dragging butts, or dragging any other appendage. This process started when the prior manager finally left the village, which was, I don't remember how many weeks after her resignation. I would have actually preferred a slightly more drugged out process because I thought we put too much burden on ourselves to get from 52 to five. But that's water under the bridge now. We are where we are. So I think we should hear the presentations. If there's an appetite for culling out the field, that we, we can do that tonight. I would not make a decision tonight. We decided not to last time we were together. And the schedule that Mayor Davey suggested seems fine to me. Uh, and I think a meet and greet is the right thing to do before we do that. Councilmember McCormick, you're the last one. So there's not much to say that hasn't been said, but I'll just um, sum up where my position is on all things discussed thus far. Um, 
like Ignacio and Frank, I, I am fine with the mayor's proposed timeline. Um, I do feel strongly that taking any kind of action in terms of even reducing the field tonight, I think is inappropriate. We were clear we weren't taking action tonight. We didn't advertise it. I don't think it goes towards our goals of transparency in government. So I would be opposed to that. And I think that when you're in such a small field already, it's not that much of an advantage as opposed to just waiting and doing it in one meeting. Um, and as, a, as with respect to adding Chief Press, I've been immensely impressed with his abilities. <laughs> I would be happy to discuss it, so but I think that- Let's just make him the manager. Be, Luke, yeah, the meeting over. No, Ed, I-, I, I mayor, let, her, let her continue her- I'm mayor. not talking to her, I was talking to Luis. Well, but then you're talking into that. your mic. So I think the appropriate way to do that is to hear Brett's motion and vote on it, as opposed to sit here and, and just take, you know, one-liners or whatever at each other. So that that's where I am. Hmm. All right, let's move on to special mayor, presentation. Excuse me, Mayor. Yeah, yes. Well, I'm known for my transparency and directness. But this concept, now by two, three people, is literally shocking to me. <laughs> it is literally almost bordering on the unethical. Okay. I let's get through the presentations. I think, Mr. Mayor, have a Mr. Mayor, don't, 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 don't regress back to your on your, the role that you think you run this thing. You, I, I have a right to speak. Well, would, you just, would, would, I, would you just? Would you just? Are you going to? Are you going to go back to two years ago? No, are no. You, no. All right, may I finish without you interrupting me, sir? Councilmember, we've all had brief comments. No, Mr. Mr. Mayor, there has been a radical, extraordinary proposal by a council member that, in my view, is a radical change, not noticed, on on completely unethical. Some of us, some of us have been trying, perhaps naively, and I mean, to try to reconcile this community after the very unnecessarily divisive election we have a few months ago. If we were to take this action where there was a pledge and a condition from the interim manager, because we had other candidates, I, I, we had other excellent candidates, that Chief Press would not be a candidate or somebody who would take the position, it is absolutely a complete comp confirmation that there is a clique and a conspiracy and underhanded kind of rule in the city. And if it is, I will change my chip and I will, I'm prepared to vote on it today because this is a talk about noticing. You talk about noticing about selecting from four to two. You didn't notice you know that this matter of, <laughs> of such a 360 well, degree degree is, all got together. It, it, it's, sho it's shocking oh, to me and I don't believe oh, it's, this is happening spontaneously. I really am, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm literally, literally surprised and shocked <laughs> by the, 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 the audacity and the lack of transparency and the lack of sensitivity <laughs> of, this, if this, of, this, of, this, of this proposal and its impact on this community. If you want to go down the road of bans, groups against bans, let's do it. Uh, but this is, I never, I never knew we would get this slow on it. And so, so that you know exactly how I feel on this issue, which was not noticed. I, I agree with you. Again, I, I want to be. I can I, wait, I, I would like to speak. Councilmember Moss, then Councilmember McCormick, then the Vice Mayor. Yeah, I think there was a couple of things that were said that I think are are incorrect. Exactly. One, borderline unethical. I don't know what that means. Two, I I've heard. You I, 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 okay, I also heard Councilmember London say that we all got together. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh come on. No, no. I heard okay. transparency. I, I heard That's issues fine. of transparency. All of these are false. One thing I want to make clear is that our interim manager did not approach me in any way and it didn't and actually told me that he was not interested in taking that position, but if we felt that we would need him, he's having a great time. He loves doing it. And I said, "You know what? I like to have the options." And I said, "I'm going to talk to the employees. I want to talk to the directors and see how they feel." I spoke to every single director and it took me time. I wasn't in that area thinking at first, but I took my time and considered it. 
And all I'm asking, and I didn't say we had to take a vote tonight, Council Member Laredo. I said that I would like to bring it up <laughs> to see if there was a consensus. If it's not, I'm noticing you that I am going to bring it as a motion in the next meeting. I think that's very transparent. I don't think this is throwing any curveball at anybody. I'm trying to tell you guys ahead of time what I was thinking. But all I'm asking is that why not consider him? Is it because of a rule? If that's what you guys want, then we vote on it and that's fine. I I'm okay with it. But I took the time. I did a lot of due diligence also looking at him as a possible candidate. And what I found talking to him actually amazed me. I was actually much more impressed than I, that I thought I was going to be. And I'm asking for you guys to take the time to do it too. But if you don't want to, and if you <clears throat> don't want to, I'm fine with that also. But I just yeah. wanted to bring that up. But I think it's unfair to talk about transparency or we got together or borderline unethical, whatever. I mean, if that's what you guys want to start pitching this politic talk and everything like that, <laughs> I brought this up on my own. And if I don't have the support, I don't, I don't know if I have the support. And if I don't, I don't. But I just asked him for a consideration. That's it. But if, you know, you guys decide what you do. Councilmember McCormick. Yeah, and then I am, Council, I am, and then Vice Mayor, and then Councilmember Cigarola. I think I'm going to have to say I'm outraged. I feel like I've been accused of violating the Sunshine Law tonight. I've been accused of being in some sort of a clique. I want to be very clear to Councilmember Laredo. What I said, and I hope you rewatch the beginning of this meeting, was that I was intrigued <clears throat> said but that I didn't want to discuss it tonight because it was inappropriate he said he was making a motion at the next meeting I think it's appropriate to discuss it then and to vote vote however you want but please do not accuse me of violating sunshine laws but uh, when did I accuse you of, 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 of sunshine law when did, when did, the well we're back to a year ago uh, I unfortunately, I, I did not accuse you personally. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous and out of line to bring something so important out of line to me. That is, in all my experience, I've never been hit so hard. I've never been hit so hard. Blindsided. Ed just accused us of the floor. Councilman McCormick, proceed. We all agreed that we would each take our turn. We have now traveled back two years that after we each had our turn, you got to go again and get last licks on us. That oh. was extremely inappropriate. <laughs> I'm done. How sad. How sad. Vice Mayor London and then Council Member Sager. Yeah, go again. Listen, uh, Michael, uh, yes. if it's the will, of the will of the council to have Chuck be our manager, why don't, we just no vote on, why don't we just vote on that tonight, not waste any more time, waste any money, and be done with this thing? It seems that we have enough votes to, to put him and forget all the other kids. <clears throat> forget all the time we invested or consultants we hired or money we spent. Let's get it over with. Let's just do it. That's what you want. Do you want to make Chuck the, the manager? Um, it seems like that's the thing. I mean, that's, I hear these things and you read into them very easily. So, and I know that's how some people have felt since the beginning. Well, let's just do it and not waste any more time or money or in anybody else's, uh, you know, we got a lot of other things to do. Um, unlike Brett, I haven't encountered Cigarola is next. You can respond. <clears throat> Councilmember Cigarola, you have the floor. I reiterate everything I said before. I think we all started this process and we said publicly, we pledged that the interim manager would not be a candidate. I think to sustain our credibility, we need to stick to that. If we believe that we do not have the correct pool of candidates for manager, we've wasted this much time. My suggestion is to reopen to some of the other candidates. Instead, with all due respect to Chief Press, there were some fantastic candidates that did not make the final five. There are people with decades of municipal experience, people with experience managing millions, hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars of worth of construction projects that did not make the final five. And again, with all respect to Chief Press, if we're gonna go down this road, let's go back to, the, to some of the 52 people that applied because it, breaking our word, something that we all agreed to in the beginning is not the way to go. And there is no way I'm going to support that. Councilman McCormick, did you want to respond to the vice mayor's comments? Don't leave me. <clears throat> okay. 
The, the vice mayor asked for a motion to vote on this today. Nobody no. asked for a motion. Yeah, the, the, the vice mayor did. For what? Hold on. To vote on what? London. Sir? Does anybody else have any further comments? He, he went to the restaurant. Okay. All yeah. Right, let's get the yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilman yeah, there's there's a, a couple of options. You made a motion to vote on it today. I'm, I'm saying not to vote on it. Be the there's been no motion noticed. There's there's nothing for us to vote to, to vote on. No. We need to no. we need to understand. <laughs> Councilmember Moss wanted to make a motion and put something on the agenda for the next meeting. That would be appropriate. That's his right. That was my point at the beginning of all this that he doesn't, we, we, we're not going to vote on anything tonight that has not been noticed. The public don't have a notice of this. So there's there's nothing on the floor. So no. <clears throat> did you have some final words before we can get moving on this evening? What, what Ed suggested was he surmised there had been a consensus that had developed. Um, that is incorrect. That's not my view. That's not where I am. Um, there, we can select from the four. We can go back to market as Ignacio suggested, but Brett's introduced another idea. That's a discussion, that's a decision. But that's a decision to be made at a meeting when everything's noticed. It's not for tonight. I, just, that's exactly right. Presentations have been noticed, an ordinance has been noticed. Let's remember this meeting was called so that we could vote on the second reading of an ordinance that we wanted to get done before the end of the meeting, before the end of the month. And then we decided we would have this, the special presentations. That was all this was. Nobody noticed that we we're going to be making a decision. What we're doing is we're, we're you want to talk about subverting the will of the public to have a vote on anything right now in the ordinance would be improper and against transparency. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue with the special presentations. We're going to have a vote on an ordinance and then we're going to decide next actions for us as a council on this subject. That's it. Let's move on. Next item, Mr. Mayor, is a special presentation by the village manager search consultants. Okay, um, thank you to our consultants um, for all the time that you all put in, Mr. Manager. Um, I'm gonna ask you to sort of run this part of the entertainment um, and, and let's proceed. Wow, uh, council, good evening, mayor, uh, everybody. Um, we have three consultants. Mm -hmm. We have the Tate Group, are we still on? our manager consult <laughs> meeting. Is that where we're on? Okay. Village manager search consultants presentations. Okay. Item 4A. We, we, we have three consultants that the village hired to provide background investigations, to provide assessments and all of the things that you wanted when it came to hiring a village manager. We had the take group, we had uh, Kent Journey and Associates, and we had Connie Hoffman. Each one of them had a different profession. Each one of them had a different way to provide you with who they thought was best, et cetera, and so forth. But each one of them had a different process. And the idea tonight, per consensus, was to just talk about out the process. And I apologize up front for whatever is going on here, but my idea tonight was simply to provide three consultants and have them discuss a process. Period. End of story. So I would like to start with the Tate group. I would like to then bring out Ms. Hoffman and her assessment. And then I would like to finish with Kent Journey and his proposal as to how they develop their process. So could we please, uh, Peter, reach out to Mr. Tate and have Graham Tate provide us with his process. Okay, I am, I'm ready if you are. Uh, ready. I'm Grant, Grant Tate, G-R-E-N-T-T-A-T-E. 
I'm from Charlottesville, Virginia. The name of my company actually is Bridge Business Transformations. Uh, we use assessments as an integral part of our processes that when we work with businesses and organizations, including local governments. And uh, the assessments have helped us with regard to our personal coaching process that we help individuals uh, learn to work better and achieve their goals and also uh, work with teams. And, and so uh, I, here in Charlottesville, I've worked with um, businesses of various types and uh, mostly uh, focusing on uh, how growth and how do you develop good, strong leaders. They, uh, I, we've done over a thousand of these processes, uh, these assessments, and most of the process typically is just as we have implemented it with you. Uh, I was asked to, to test five people. These were the five top candidates that apparently you had chosen. <clears throat> and other than that, I don't know much about your process. So what, you, what you've been talking about tonight was brand new to me. Nor did I know that one of the candidates had dropped out. So that also was news to me. But the process is uh, pretty simple. I, I receive the names of the people. I send them a link to uh, where Council they can meeting. I can't talk. I'll call you back assessments. later. Goodbye. Yes. Yes. Bye. I, I provide them with a link. They click the link and then they spend uh, whatever time it takes. And usually it's about 30 minutes to answer the questions and uh, submit their, their answer. Once they push submit, uh, both that person and I get a copy of the report. It's 70 pages long. And so it's in considerable detail. The test itself has three parts, all based on scientific background and they've been validated in, in uh, various forms over the, over the years. The first is a disc test that looks basically as how a person behaves and makes decisions. And the DISC stands for decisiveness, interaction, stability, and caution. Uh, the next part of the test is, is called values. And this basically looks at what drives the person. What are they motivated by? And then the third piece is attribute index, which looks at how they, uh, they're a deep level of their values and how they like to work and integrate and work with people. And it looks at empathy, practical thinking, and systemic thinking. And then at the individual level, it also, we get a view of their self-confidence and their self-direction. Uh, then once I get a copy of the report, uh, I ask the uh, individual who's taken the test, please read the report and then uh, schedule a time where we can talk. Uh, this is called the debrief. Uh, the debrief typically takes one to one and a half hours. And generally the purpose of that is to validate the results of what we're seeing. And as, as, you, as you can well imagine, uh, the, uh, 70, even 70 pages, there are questions a person might raise. I can say in the case of all five of these people, we had a very good uh, agreement with the, with the results of the test. And so I feel confident that uh, what you've been looking at as, as my re report is, <coughs> is uh, accurate. Uh, after uh, then what happened after I had talked to all five individuals, then I looked at all the data uh, and compiled a summary report for you, which is what you've had in your, your hands. And I might say that there is no such thing as a, uh, we're not looking for high scores. We're looking for what, are, what can we learn about the person's characteristics. Uh, based on what I know, I cannot recommend somebody <coughs> from these five people. And the reason for that is I don't know what you're looking for. 
So there was no criteria against which we could we we uh, we could measure. I can tell you something about how they like to make decisions and uh, uh, their their characteristics, but uh, I can't say for what you need. Uh, this person's number one. This is number two, and so forth. On the other hand, uh, we can might ask the question: Was there anything that came out that <coughs> I might disqualify somebody? And once in a while, over a thousand people, we've had that happen, but not among these five. Uh, as a for the five individuals involved, I uh, the reception I got I thought was very very positive. They all took a took part uh, with uh, even enthusiasm. Uh, our conversations were warm and informative. And my reaction, personal reaction was that I don't know what the yellow 50 looked like, but you did a pretty good job of choosing five. Okay, with that, I will, uh, um, well, let, let me make one, one additional comment. I included in, in the report some of the, some of the graphs, and I caution you against jumping to conclusions based on, on graph data. You please look at the comments because uh, you, uh, the interpretation is important. And if you have any questions at all individually about how to interpret what I've sent you, then I can certainly talk to you or Zoom with you individually to go into more depth. Thank you, sir. Anybody have questions for Mr. Tate? All right, thank you, Mr. Tate, much appreciated. Okay, Mr. Mayor, next I would like to invite Connie Hoffman. Hi, can everybody hear me? Yeah, yes, we, we can. Okay. Um, just for the benefit of the public who's who may be watching this meeting, I want to give you a little bit about my background. You all know it, but the public doesn't. Um, I have been a city manager for over 15 years, I've been in municipal government for over 20 years, and I was a city manager in a very large city and in a very small town. The small town was a beachfront community um, here in Florida. I've also been in the private sector for over 20 years in, in a number of capacities in the corporate world, and I've also had my own businesses. Um, I got interested in doing the kind of work that I did for you back when I was a city manager um, and made a bad hiring decision and decided that there needed to be a better way to find candidates. And so we did a <coughs> on what technologies were out there and what systems and different ways of approaching hiring existed. And some of the tools that I used in your selection process are based on my years of experience with tools that I believe have worked well for me as a manager hiring department heads and assistant city managers in the past. Um, so my process was, uh, let's see, I had, I think I had three different, uh, three different things that I did. Number one was to interview the candidates. Um, I use a system of interviewing called behavior based interview where you ask people to describe situations that they've actually been through um, and you learn how they dealt with the situation in real life, not theoretical. So the bulk of my interview questions um, ask them, describe a situation in which uh, the circumstances were like this and what did you do? Uh, that interview, typically I, I just do those interviews by um, by phone or face to face in some cases, but this time, because, um, you had narrowed it down to five people without having, you know, really gone through any process other than your own review of resumes. I, I, I went into it a little bit deeper. So I asked each candidate, I gave them, uh, probably a third of the questions in writing and asked them to give me written answers. Um, that was helpful. In, in that I got was able to get a lot more information than I could in a two hour interview. And hopefully that was helpful to you too in reading it. Um, they told me that they spent anywhere from two to five hours answering those questions. 
then I continued the rest of the interview in person on the phone. Um, I do my interviews on phone. I've learned years ago that I can be influenced by someone's appearance. And so I do them on the phone rather than on Zoom or by um, FaceTime, because I just want to hear what they say and what they're telling me. Um, the interview focuses on their experience as it related to uh, the needs of, of uh, Key Biscayne. I go into statements that they made on their resume and I get them to clarify that or explain it further when it's not clear. And I think you'll see in the interview results that there were numerous instances where someone claims something on their resume that turns out to be a bit of a exaggeration of what they actually did. Um, I asked them to tell me about situations they've dealt with in the past and how they handled it. And that gives me insight into their, uh, their managerial skills, their judgment, things like that. Um, I also asked them why do they want the job? Because that's often very revealing. How much homework did they do on the village um, in advance of uh, um, competing for the job? I asked them if they've had any troubling incidents in their past. Um, hopefully, you know, your background check people are finding those things, but it's also a way to um, see if they're honest because if something comes up in the background, they haven't talked about it, then that's an issue for you. <clears throat> By getting some of the answers question, uh, the questions answered, excuse me, in writing, you get a sense of their writing skills. Um, and then, uh, verbally, I, I made notes in my interview and you probably saw that with some of the candidates, um, it was difficult to understand what they were getting at. And I had to repeatedly ask them questions to narrow down what they were really saying. So you have that input too. Um, that's the interview. Uh, I spend two hours on the interview at a minimum on the phone with them. And as I say, they spent anywhere from two to five hours preparing their answers. Uh, the next aspect of my work was to test for certain managerial skills. And in this instance, I used two tests. One is a, an in-basket exam. In-baskets were developed by uh, the U.S. Army way back in the 60s as a way to do a better job of selecting people to become officers. And in the in-basket, the candidate is, is, is given a scenario in which they play a manager, a new manager coming into a situation. They're not a city manager in this instance. Um, this is sort of a generic in-basket test that's thousands of people in the United States have taken it. But it is validated to be a predictor um, of performance. So you, you're the, you're the uh, new manager coming into a fictional employment center. In this case, it was a university and you have an in-basket piled up because your predecessor left uh, months before and you've got to tackle all of this stuff and you only have 90 minutes to do it. It's done online. Um, the, uh, it's a California company that developed this test over 30 years ago and they score it. They, um, as I say, they had thousands of people in their database. And so your candidates were scored against the performance of everyone in their database. And I wanna emphasize that the people who have taken their test can be from um, sort of junior managers all the way up to chief executives. So when you, when you see the result and it says this person has a moderate score, I want to make sure you understand that that is means average performance on this test against everyone who's ever taken it. It doesn't mean average performance against chief executive officers. The in basket um, test for the following skills or dimensions of performance, sensitivity, initiative, planning and organizing skills, delegation, decisiveness, uh, problem analysis, judgment. I always like to point out to judgment and decisiveness all deal with the decision that a person makes. 
but decisiveness means they make a decision. It could be the wrong decision, but they make a decision. They don't defer action. Judgment means the quality of the decision that they make. Did they consider as many factors as were available to them to make a reasonable, logical decision? Um, I want to point out that for a city manager candidate, um, particularly at, at the level of pay that Key Biscayne is offering, on an in-basket, I would normally expect to see um, lots of moderately high or high scores across those dimensions, and preferably no low scores, but no more than one low score. Um, and I, I tell you that so that you can, it might help you understand why I rank people the way I did and made the comments I did in my report to you. Then there was an employee discussion exercise. In this one, um, right before we do the exercise, and we did that on FaceTime, I emailed to the candidates a description of the scenario that they're facing. In that, in that exercise, they were <coughs> a city manager in a small town, and that they have learned some very disturbing things about one of their department heads. Uh, from employees who have left, who have quit because of that department head's behavior. And so um, they're given about half an hour to prepare for the meeting. And then the meeting itself takes about half an hour. Um, and I played the role of the employee. In that case, I score their performance uh, against a coaching model. Um, and it's, it basically lists the various steps that someone should take when they're trying to coach an employee for better, for, to better performance and to address a performance issue. The only difference between the coaching model and a discipline model is that the discipline model um, explains to the employee what the consequences of their actions are and what the final consequences will be if the behavior continues. Um, and then the final aspect of my assignment from the village was to do reference checks on all the candidates, um, in which case the candidates uh, gave me some names and contacts, and then I also reached out to other people that knew them, or I asked them for the names and phone numbers of people that they didn't put on their, their um, reference list, because obviously most people are going to uh, theoretically only put people on their reference list that are going to give them a good reference. But that's not always true, and that wasn't always true in this case either. Um, I have a series of questions that I ask on the reference check, which you, you got in my report, and um, I use the reference uh, questions in part to verify what the candidate has told us in their uh, resume or in the interview that I did with them. And there are cases which you will have seen as you read the report where um, references contradicted what we were told by the candidates. The reference checks, I, I did anywhere from five to I think eight or nine people for each candidate. Those interviews generally last about 40 minutes. Um, and that, that was the process I used. And again, you know, I'm available to you to answer any questions you have about individual candidates or the contents of my report. I do want to clarify um, that after sometime next week, I'm getting on a private boat and heading off into the seas and we'll have very limited um, internet exposure. I have it sometimes and other times I don't. So please call me this week. If, uh, if you have any questions. And again, tonight I'm available to answer any questions that you might have. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Hoffman at this time? Your Vice Mayor. You're muted. There you go. You're, you're, go ahead, Ed. Ed Ms. Hoffman, uh, I read your report. Thank you so much for time and effort you spent based on the test that you did uh, you came to some conclusions, which basically was 
you're the only one who actually of the three consultants that took a stand, although I understand where Ken Journey was not, would not recommend or not recommend somebody, but you went ahead and said basically that two people were not qualified. Was that based on their scores on the standardized test? Was it based on the interviews? Was that based on everything you did? It was, it was the composite of everything I did. Thank you. For very example, much. one candidate had very good, had decent, good scores on the, um, the two tests, but I didn't recommend him. How accurate or how, how predictive are these scores? I mean, I, one of our council members talked about, you know, you have to have experience as a village manager. That's really predictive. Usually if you've been good, you're going to be good again. Uh, and I, it's, do you really favor village managers or I shouldn't say village managers, managers in governmental positions more so than other people with the tests that you give. And if you do, to me, it's, it's a certain bias because we didn't say, okay, only people with manager experience will apply. So we have a bunch of good people. We had 52 people mm -hmm. and we wound up with five excellent people, but some of them, like most of them, didn't have a lot of quote, village manager, county manager, city manager, state manager experience. Did that really go against them uh, in your evaluations? Not on, okay, not on the two um, tests that I did because those tests were managerial skills and you can have great managerial skills in the private sector or in a small business or in government. So no, it didn't affect that. What it, where it did come into play in my um, evaluations was in one of the key components of the interview, or what I think in the interview, there's over 10 or 12 components. And one of them is relevant experience and the depth of that experience. That's where city government um, experience came into, came into play. But that was just one. I mean, if you figure out all the factors I looked at, mm -hmm. it was just one of maybe 20. Um, and when I talked to people that had private sector experience or, uh, armed services experience, I was trying to get them to tell me about things that they dealt with that would be relevant, um, to keep a sting, not necessarily that they dealt with a specific, um, issue that you're going to face. But for example, have they ever run uh, a very complex operation that has maybe, you know, 10 to 15 different services provided to the public. That's relevant to me. Doesn't have to be in government, but did they do that? Did they ever report, you know, to a board of directors where they had to please five or six people with very different uh, personalities and agendas? That's relevant to being a city manager because um, you have to deal with elected officials who have different perspectives, which has been evident tonight. So no, I don't, I mean, do I, you, I, I got to answer you more carefully, maybe. Do I think- <laughs> You don't have to be careful. It's just do answer. I think that, I, no, I really want to answer your question though. All things being equal, if this person, if person C had great managerial skills, but no government experience, and person A had great managerial skills and government experience, obviously person A goes to the top of the heap. And that was the case with the candidate who withdrew. When you get into the other ones, it's a mixture. You know, they have some, but they don't have, um, none of the other candidates have great municipal experience. So then it became a matter for me of balancing all of their experience and the test results and saying, who has the best chance of doing a good job for you? Yeah, I guess. Is there any credit given, or I shouldn't say credit given, a uh, consideration for a fresh set of eyes? I mean, we talk about a fire chief, we talk about a police chief. They haven't managed a government, but they've managed organizations. And they come in to a managerial thing where they're now managing everything, or they manage a military uh, battalion or regiment or division. Uh, and now they come into this thing completely new. They have not basically sat in the seat, but They've observed different managements. They have command and control experience. They know what they're doing. They test everything else well. Do they, can they be considered more? Well, you, I guess you answered, you said, no, you give the, the advantage to the one who had the governmental experience. Although it seems that a lot of times when you have a government that's 
or business. I should, my, my experience is in business. And when business is not necessarily doing very well, and they bring in somebody from the outside who's had absolutely no experience in that business. And one of the reasons they do that, because it's a fresh set of eyes. It's right. not when someone has been tainted or well, not tainted, that's not a good word, who has become accustomed to seeing business as usual. This is how it works. We don't change anything. Nothing seems to really doing great, but we don't change anything. So you bring in someone with a fresh set of eyes. Does right. a fresh set of eyes mean anything other or in contrast to governmental experience in measuring well, future success? A fresh, a fresh set of eyes is whoever comes in from another organization, whether they come from the private sector or government. And, um, you know, if somebody comes in and doesn't change anything, that's not who any organization wants because you, there are certain things that are running well, but there's always things that can be improved. But I think it's more a, I think it's more a factor of who the person is and what their skill levels are and how quickly they can learn because you can be snowed for quite a while when you don't know the subject material. Thank you and, very much. You know, it takes in my, my, I think it takes a good year and a half, two years. If you haven't had been a city manager ah. to figure it out. Council member ah, cap. That's, that's where we differ. <laughs> I, I really appreciated that conversation. That was, um, that, that was probing. Um, it seems to me that the, the flip side of uh, business as usual is blind spots. And, and as you say, Ms. Hoffman, if, if, if someone possessed um, either willful blindness or blindness as a result of either delusion or ignorance, th that's not good. And I think part of this process, and, and I think your analysis in response to the various um, measures, measures of probing these gentlemen was really designed to try to ferret out um, attributes and qualities that would predict either bias or blind spot or capabilities to evolve into something that you hadn't quite done before, but on the basis of the fact that you've done many other things with strength, with um, success. I thought your report was, was very helpful and I thank you for it. And I appreciate that conversation that just ensued. One, one last observation, I suppose one takeaway that I drew from your assessments was, uh, I'll use my words, you didn't put it in these terms exactly, but the difference between having comprehensive managerial responsibilities as opposed to discrete and limited managerial responsibilities right. is, is a tell, is a tell. Right, they're really, of uh, your candidates that came that didn't have municipal experience, even the ones that did, didn't have CEO experience. I think one said he was called a CEO, but it didn't really pan out that way. Um, so your point is well taken. It, there's a big difference between being the second in command and being in charge. And that's, I alluded to that earlier um, when I said, I've been there because I was an assistant city manager and a deputy city manager, thought I knew the job. I got into the job as a city manager and I'm thinking, oh my heavens, I am over my head. <laughs> and yeah. it took me, it took me several years to be comfortable in that position. I suppose it's would be a correct analogy to say that a city manager is the rough equivalent at least of a CEO in government. Oh, absolutely. And you, I think you had strewn throughout your report in various instances were observations that the, the particular candidate in question had demonstrated significant strengths and accomplishments here, there, and, and elsewhere. But you sometimes came to observe that it would be potentially difficult for that, you know, successful candidate in other realms possibly to deal with politics because of the nature of politics. That wasn't just me coming to that conclusion. Often that was their references. Even people who were very supportive of someone, you know, I would ask them what might trip this person up? What might cause them to fail or have a hard time? And so a lot of those observations were not just mine. They were the people who know them and who have worked with them. Yeah. So that analogy that you made a moment ago about answering to a board of directors is, is very relevant. 
-hmm. as opposed to a single manager right. or a series of managers. I, I did give credit, though, in, in the way I evaluated it to people who had regular contact with uh, city commissioners, you know, and had give and take with them in meetings and, and was constantly before them answering their questions or making presentations because that's important. Right. I mean, that's, that's the first step of learning how to work effectively with the council. And I'm sure my colleagues noted the same things. There were instances where you observed that um, uh, a candidate in his regular function reported uh, in public meetings, attended workshops, you know, was the face and voice of the community in various instances. Right. right. Anybody else have questions for Ms. Hoffman? All right, Ms. Hoffman, thanks very much for your time. Thank uh, you, folks. Thank you. Maybe a little bit more. All right, next, Mr. Manager. Thank you, Ms. Hoffman. And uh, last but not least, Mr. Kevin Cherney, who has been involved in the background business for years, uh, does backgrounds for police departments, governments, uh, all throughout South Florida. And uh, I'm going to ask him to speak now. Mr. Cherney. I had to unmute myself. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Very good. My name is Kent Journey. A quick synopsis, uh, ex-military, ex-law enforcement, retired college professor. 1976, I started a company called Journey Associates, Inc. Uh, I'm also a, a business owner. I currently own three different businesses along with my wife. Uh, we have roughly about 500 employees. So I understand what the total concept of a CEO is. This particular investigative process was started by a, the applicant's personnel, uh, not personnel file, but their application and resume being sent to our office, at which point our office uh, is, takes the file and they assign it to a research analyst. This research analyst goes through and does research to online computer research, utilizing search engines that we pay for as private investigative agency. We also go to all public records, courthouse records, criminal records, no-fly lists, sexual predator records, motor vehicle records, eviction records, civil litigations, liens, bankruptcies, and so forth. Basically, any and everything that can be out there that can be retrieved. Once we've compiled all this data into a, a, a format that we can use, uh, I assign two investigators to it. Those investigators then start going through the information, breaking it down and finding out what's relevant and what can be of importance. Once that's done, we schedule an initial interview with each applicant at our office in Miami. If the applicant wishes not to come to the office, we will conduct the interview by Zoom. Um, during the course of the initial interview, we go over everything that we've collected so far. We go over their personnel, their, their application, we go over the resume, we go over all the data that we've accumulated, both civil and criminal records, et cetera. We explain to them that the investigation will be very detailed and very thorough, and we encourage them to bring forward any information they have, which might <clears throat> come to light during the course of the investigation. This would include any negative references that we might have, because like Ms. Hoffman, we also do spinoff references where we take the references they give us and then we ask for other references or during the course of our data search and data mining, what we call it, we find other people that we think might be of interest that we contact and therefore we interview those people. Um, we subsequent to this, after the initial interview, we send out a notarized letter an authorization form to all past employers requesting any and all files that they have on the person. This includes any, um, materials concerning their employment. It can be promotions, it can be pay raises, it can be disciplinary action reports, any and everything is requested. If they won't send it to us, then we'll assign invest one of the two investigators will be assigned to it to, to go to, the, to their location if necessary. And we will sit in a private room and we'll go through the files and take copies of what we think are relevant. In this particular case, I guess supposedly primarily because of COVID, uh, all past employers were willing to send the personnel files to us 
we compiled those and put them in the book, which was submitted. We then send out a notarized letter to every single city in which the person has resided. For example, if a person lived in Palm Beach or if they lived in Broward, Bay County or other places, sometimes we may send out as many as 100 to 150 letters requesting information from the cities as to whether or not they've ever been a victim or witness or a suspect in any type of police reports in that city. We take all this information, we put it together, we compile it into a book. We then, the investigators sit down and they write a summary report. Summary report basically goes through and outlines all the information that's been accumulated. We then submit the book to the city as a preliminary book for them to review. After their review, they come back to us with questions and we conduct further investigations at the request of the city. In the event that a person is currently employed, we do not contact their current employer until after the city has reviewed the initial book. Once that's been completed we, and the city gives us permission, we then go out, we contact the applicant to tell them we will be reaching out to their current employer to make sure that they're in agreement with that. And then we move forward with the collecting the personnel files and data on their current employer. That pretty much summarizes our process. We do not make recommendations. You're muted, Mr. Mayor. No, I, I keep going. Sorry, I'm done. I'm done. That's pretty much oh, okay. that's that's my process. Perfect. Um, does anybody have any questions for Mr. Journey at this time? All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Journey. I appreciate all your work. Appreciate the information. The next item, Mr. Mayor, is the second reading of a capital project authorizing ordinance of the Village of Key Biscayne, Florida, approving the purchase of a Pierce Enforcer PUC pumper fire truck and related equipment from 108 Fire and Safety LLC in an amount not to exceed $750,000, authorizing the issuance of a fire equipment revenue bond of the Village of Key Biscayne, Florida in the aggregate principal amount not exceeding $750,000 for the purpose of financing the purchase of the fire truck, providing for a supplemental resolution, setting forth the details of the bond, authorizing the village manager to negotiate with bonds for purchase of the bond, declaring certain fire rescue equipment as surplus property, authorizing the sale or disposition of surplus property and providing for an effective date. Move. Move. Second. Thank you. Uh Okay, let's open this up for public uh, comments at this time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen watching at home on channel 77 on Comcast, on channel 99 on AT&T, or streaming us live via our website. If you wish to speak to this ordinance, please dial the following phone number. The phone number is 305-365-7569. And then please enter the meeting ID, which is 231-627-8415. For those of you that are currently in the meeting and wish to speak to the ordinance, please dial star nine on your telephones now, or if you're using the Zoom app, please raise your hand within the application. Have anybody? Mr. Mayor, nobody's signed up to speak. All right, Mr. Manager. Mr. Mayor, council members, it is recommended that the village council adopt the attached capital project offer rising ordinance on the second reading approving the purchase of Pierce Enforcer PUC pumper to be used as an advanced life support fire suppression emergency response unit for the fire rescue department in an amount not to exceed $750,000 inclusive of accessory equipment and authorize the issuance of a fire equipment revenue bond and with that said, I will turn this over to our CFO, Benjamin Nussbaum, to explain to you everything else. Thank you, sir. Sir? Good evening, Mayor Council, Benjamin Nussbaum, Chief Financial Officer. So at the first reading the ordinance, we heard from the fire chief regarding the merits of the truck. I'd like to go over the financial impact of the truck right now. There are really three main categories here. And the first is the reason that we're here tonight. Um, that's we've negotiated with the vendor to hold the fiscal year 20 pricing into fiscal year 21 
However, they need a purchase order by tomorrow, March the 31st. It's worthwhile doing because the percent change is 3% if we're not able to get it in time. In dollars, that'll save about $21,000 on the purchase of the fire truck. The second is the vendors offering a prepayment discount if we're able to pay off the fire truck within 15 days. That discount is 2.7%, which equals about another $19,000. What I recommend that we do is we prepay the fire truck and then use the proceeds from the revenue bond to reimburse the village. Since we're anticipating closing on the bonds on May 10th, roughly two to three weeks later, the annualized percentage rate on that 2.7 is in excess of 30% with a good financial position and move for the village to do. And lastly, I wanna discuss the financing of the truck. Earlier this month, we sent out an RFP to over 70 financial institutions to have a competitive bidding process on terms and interest rates for the truck. Uh, on Friday, it closed and we received a very attractive offer from a financial institution on a 10 year loan, which, mas which matches the, the life expectancy of the vehicle for one and three quarters percent interest. This interest rate will save about $21,000 compared to the interest rate that was provided by the manufacturer. So adding those three components combined, We'll save about $61,000 as to what was first proposed in the purchase of this fire truck. The final terms of that loan will come back as a resolution at the April 27th meeting with all of the details at that time. I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Vice Mayor London. Truck, and if that is, or did I misunderstand? I didn't hear the beginning, sorry. Cut off, Ed. Restate your question. Uh, am I muted, Tom, Mike? No, you're fine. You're good now. Restate. Thank you. Uh, Benjamin is asking, did, did I understand you say we would get a discount for prepaying for the truck before we got it? That's correct. And uh, have you checked the finances of the company that's manufacturing the truck? So make sure if we prepay them, they go broke, we're not stuck? We have. So in the solicitation for when we actually... Uh, I'm sorry? When we went through the procurement process of the truck, the, the establishment has been vetted and has a contract. The, I think the Florida Sheriff's Association, Florida Sheriff's Association as well. So it's a reputable venue. Unfortunately, Benjamin, I'm hard of hearing and I really yes, uh, didn't hear the, what did he say? He said, yes, uh, they've, been, yeah. they've vetted him. They vet, and you feel confident that we're not taking any risk uh, by prepaying them? I feel confident. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, let's call the question. Councilmember Kaplan? Yes. Councilmember Laredo? Yes. Vice Mayor London? Yes. Councilmember McCormick? Yes. Councilmember Moss? Yes. Councilmember Segarola? Yes. Mayor Davey? Yes. The ordinance is, is adopted on second reading. Okay. Thank you, Council. Thank you all. Mr. Mayor, Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I have a question. What's your question, Councilman? A question for the manager. Mr. Manager. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sure you saw the beginning of this meeting. Uh, and I recall distinctly at the beginning of this process that you made a pledge that you would not be a candidate, nor will you accept the position of village uh, manager. Uh, arising from this comments from fellow, some fellow councilmen, are you rescinding or withdrawing that pledge today so I can move forward with a reality check? Great question, sir. My pledge was that I was not seeking this position under any circumstance. However, I have always been a soldier for the village of Key Biscayne. And if you also direct and you wish me to be your manager, I would do that. If you wish me not to be your manager, I've got an agreement to go back to being your police chief and happy to be there. So I serve at the purpose and at the direction of the village council, period, end of story. Well, it's not the end of story for me. I recall, and my vote, I uh, have a lot of respect for you for a police chief, and there were a lot other candidates that were 
just as qualified, that that to me was an ironclad pledge. And I have a, a very strong commitment to my word and words, I didn't get anything in writing, that you would not be, uh, I think you, uh, to be honest with you, I think you've given us an answer that it's a, to me, a non-answer. In other words, you, you are willing to be a village manager and that is a paradigm shift from what I understood your, your position was at the beginning. Uh, to tell you that I'm disappointed would be an understatement, but I'm, uh, I, I'm learning a, a little bit at, about the new Kiwis game. So, well, you're, not, you're, not, that, so that you're not rescinding your pledge with, not to be manager. With all due respect. Yeah. With okay. all due respect. I, I did say that I was not looking for the position of village manager. And I also said that I am a soldier and I would do yeah, I, I whatever the wish of your council was. If you don't <laughs> want me to be that, sir, I am more than happy to yes. be your police chief. So yeah. it was a conditional pledge that now we, you, I, I, I'm sure no, you're not a lawyer, not but it's a, okay. Well, enough said. I think, I think I've got a clear message now for right. what I've been fighting for the last few months from people who have a, uh, another view of what's going on behind the scenes. But today I've had a wonderful baptism and I appreciate your candor, uh, in, in rephrasing your pledge that I thought was more, I did uh, rephrase but, my so, pledge. So anyway, we'll just move forward. As, well, what, uh, what's under, going under on the behind the, I want to know what's going on behind the scenes. All right. I don't know what that is. It's accusations. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Yeah, I move to adjourn. Let's go. Move Thank adjourn. you. Thank you. <laughs>